So as we all know, Jesus died for our sins over 2,000 years ago. For, but for some reason, a man time travels back in time to save him, and it leads to human extinction. Let's find out what's going on in this one. The year is 33 AD. It's the night before Jesus is killed. He is praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, when suddenly there is a flash of blue light. A team of assassins from 2022 has successfully time traveled to 33 AD. Their mission is to kill Jesus and prevent his resurrection so that Christianity can be wiped out out before it's even born. The assassin starts scouting for Jesus and his disciples who have all fallen asleep. Just then, a large mob armed with swords and clubs Not comes sure to arrest Jesus. Jesus and crucify him. However, the assassins who have arrived to alter history quickly interrupt them. They start shooting everyone in sight and leave no one alive except for Jesus. After a while, they find him lying on the ground with several bullet wounds. One of the soldiers tells Jesus that if he's really the son of God, he should have been able to stop the bullets. However, Jesus answers that this time has already come. The soldier then pulls the trigger and kills the Son of God. Then they put him in a bag and with the help of a time-traveling watch-like device, return to the present. In the meantime, a group this of good scientists wild. witness what has just happened. They figure that they must quickly travel back in time to undo everything because their reality could change to a new one as the past has been altered. Right. They then travel back in time to 33 AD to save Jesus, but they're too late. They have arrived just moments before the assassins have finished off Jesus and his disciples. <laughs> <laughs> they literally have a time machine. How did they screw that up? Now right, they have to quickly go back to the present before time rewrites itself, as the current timeline can be overridden by a new one since Jesus' death. However, when one of them successfully returns to the present, he's captured immediately by the assassin group. But oh soon, reality God. starts to change. The office building starts to warp into an apocalyptic wasteland. In this timeline, it's clear that humans have gone extinct. Soon, underground creatures start to rise and feed on him, killing the last human left on on Earth. Then, the screen fades to black. What? Following this, the movie flashes back to a few months before everything transpired. We are introduced to one of the villains that will kill Jesus. His name is Brant, an ex-military officer. As of now, he's still a devoted Christian who believes in Christ. However, everything is about to change. On a seemingly beautiful day, he's out on a drive with his wife and kids. It turns out that Brant has been offered as the head of security for a top-secret company, so he's traveling to another state. Unfortunately, along the way, the family gets into a horrific car crash, taking the lives of Brant's wife and children. Brant screams in horror as he watches his entire family burn in a that's, flaming wreck. Because of the incident, Brant has now turned into a man hating life and God. He blames God for not saving- How is that God- How is that God's fault? <laughs> you got an accident! God had nothing to do with that! What are you- What? <laughs> Yo! I get it, it's a horrific thing that you just went through, but that had nothing to do with God. Why are you mad at him for? I the things we blame God for, I just, it's, it's interesting. It's crazy. His family. At this point, the former militant also questions the existence of divinity. Following this, we meet a young and aspiring scientist, Ram Goldstein. He meets Amy Lee, one of his classmates, for the first time during a physics test. From that point onwards, they start to develop romantic feelings towards each other. The movie then skips to three months in the future, and we meet a group of young scientists led by Ram. They are ingenious grads, including Felix, Simon, and Amy, who are working on a project involving math matter transference for a non-specific global company run by a well-dressed and worldly Arab billionaire named Ahmed. And as it turns out, Brandt is the head of security for Ahmed's company. In a lab, the young scientists work tirelessly on their matter transference projects. When Ram tests one of his algorithms, the team mistakenly blows up the place. This makes Ahmed, the boss, himself come down and check on his scientists. This but what the team doesn't know is that they were able to move the chair which Ram used to test his matter transference algorithm. Them. Are they sure it wasn't the explosion that moved it? This discovery earns the team an upgrade into Ahmed's top team. The billionaire promises them a handsome bonus in exchange for creating a matter transporting device. In the meantime, a flashback is shown where we learn that Ahmed's parents were once part of an extremist group, but because of certain events, they were forced to convert to Christianity. And because of this change, they were murdered at the hands of the extremist group on grounds of betraying their own faith. Since then, Ahmed, who is still loyal to the extremist group, blames Jesus Christ and Christianity for the death of his parents. He wants to have his scientists work on a time machine so that he can go back in time to 33 AD and kill Jesus to discredit him as the Messiah, ultimately wiping out Christianity. What he believes that actual, his God is the- what, Like, what am I watching? <laughs> Bro, 
You got people who are mad at God, so they're trying to go back in time to kill Jesus, who's literally our only hope. Like, our only hope, and you're going to go kill that man. Okay, that just makes sense. You see how screwed up we are as human beings? This is crazy. You're going to wipe out <laughs> the man who died for you. That's 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 what that's what we're doing. That's 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 what this movie's about. That is wild. only true this God. And with time travel, he can go back and right the wrongs of the world by killing Christ before his crucifixion and resurrection. Meanwhile, Ram and Damie continue to work tirelessly as they're being monitored 24-7 by Ahmed's men. They decide to take a break for a while and sneak into the <laughs> server room where they aren't surveilled. Oh, the they, couple make out, oh, but they are interrupted they a by a weird static sound. When Ram checks on one of the servers, he finds out that Ahmed is secretly working with a generic terrorist group. He further learns that the the terrorist their boss is working for is hell-bent on waging World War III through matter transference technology with bombs and weaponry transferred from one place to another. Despite learning this, he is forced to continue with the mission, and after a couple of trials and errors, Ram finally succeeds in transferring matter and accidentally creates the world's first time machine. Ahmed's men see via surveillance that not only has Ram found the secret to matter transfer, but he also discovered the secret to time travel. However, since Ram knows that Ahmed is up to something bad, he tries to delete all the files before they get into the wrong hands. Soon enough, Ahmed and his men storm into the lab and apprehend Ram. Then, the cunning billionaire reveals his plans to send a team, led by the now disillusioned Brant, back to Jerusalem, where they will assassinate Jesus Christ and his disciples, thus making sure Christianity never comes to fruition. But the problem is that Ram wouldn't give him the code to the computer that hides the secret to time travel. So, Ahmed has his men torture him, put him in a sack, and lock him in a warehouse. After a while, the thugs physically abuse Ram and urge him to share the code of the time machine. To make matters worse, Ahmed arrives at the scene and holds Ram's parents hostage. Despite this, the young scientist still refuses to share the code. So, the extremists kill his parents. There goes all their leverage. Meanwhile, Amy and the others are worried that Ram might be in trouble as he's not answering his phone. Just crazy. then, the group is approached by their employer, Ahmed, who tells them that they have been cleared out of their contract and will no longer longer have to work, although each of them will be compensated as promised. The only catch is that they cannot make any contact with anyone outside their work at the moment. When Amy asks about Ram, Ahmed lies, saying that he is in safe hands, no, in not. fact, working on a top US military project. No, Back not. in the lab, Ahmed threatens to torture Amy and all his friends, and that is when the young scientist finally gives in and agrees to build the time machine. And as soon as it is finished, Ahmed has one of his men test it. As expected, the time machine works, and the man is teleported reported from one place to another. Playing on Brant's hatred for God, Ahmed uses him and his right-hand man Sabir to gather his combat team and travel back in time to carry out the ultimate true mission this to kill Jesus and his disciples insane. before his resurrection. Surprisingly, insane. Brant is totally down with this insane scheme and quickly assembles a team of assassins to hop inside the time machine. Meanwhile, Amy and the others sneak into a surveillance room and finally spot Ram, who is tied with rope in the warehouse. They rescue him and learn about Ahmed's plan. On the other hand, Brant and his team have successfully landed in the past at the set time, i.e. 33 AD, and start scouting for Jesus. After killing all of his disciples, Brant viciously shoots Christ in the head. He then has his men put Jesus in a bag and they return to the present. In the meantime, Ram along with his genius team witnesses what just happened from the CCTV. Ram starts to explain that their reality will soon change to a different one as the past has been altered. However, it may take some time for it depending on how far back in time it has been all Altered. It could take minutes or even hours. Hearing this, the team immediately travels back in time in an attempt to stop Brant, but they're too late. They have arrived just moments before the assassins have finished off Jesus and his disciples. Now they have to go back into the present before time rewrites itself, as the current timeline will be overridden by a new one since Jesus' death. Ram and Amy decide to go first, and in case they are killed, Simon and Felix are their last hope to stop Ahmed and his crazy mission. In the next scene, Ram and Amy arrive in hour early in the present, that is, just before Ram's parents were murdered. This means there are still the second versions of the scientists in this timeline, along with Brant and his assassins. Unfortunately, they are soon spotted and chased by Ahmed's men. The pair barricade themselves in a lab, where they are eventually cornered. However, Amy manages to warn her second self from the current timeline via the CCTV camera. She explains through sign language that Ahmed's men went back to kill Jesus and that they have to save Ram, who is in the warehouse. That's some advanced sign language. Shortly
shortly after, the pair is killed. Elsewhere, Felix and Simon are still in 33 AD. After waiting for the now dead Ram and Amy, the pair decides to return. Using their time retrievers, Felix successfully travels to the present, while Simon has his retriever broken and gets stuck in that timeline. Wow. Sadly, when Felix arrives wow, in the present, he finds crazy. Ahmed and his men waiting in the time machine. At this point, Ahmed has succeeded in creating a world without Christians by killing Jesus. However, their reality soon turns into an apocalyptic wasteland. Right, this is because he's created happen? an existence without forgiveness. Slowly, this version of Felix dies in the wasteland. This means the first versions of the scientists have all died, except for Simon. Meanwhile, the second versions That's of the scientists wild. watch the CCTV footage and quickly rush to rescue Ram from the warehouse. They even go to the lab and go back in time even further, hence creating time loops within time loops. They travel back in time just 10 minutes before Brant and his men arrive in 33 AD. A firefight breaks out, which kills both Felix and Simon. Only Ram and Amy make it out alive from their team, while Brant and Sabir escape. However, Amy is severely wounded in the encounter. As a devout Christian, she wants Ram to go after Brant and Sabir and stop them from killing Jesus. Ram doesn't want to leave her alone, but when she insists, he agrees. He then takes off his clothes, this is no time to get naked, and binds them around <laughs> Amy to stop the right. bleeding. Oh, after a while, that's crazy. After a while, Ram spots Sabir and starts chasing him. In the meantime, the first version of Simon is still alive in his timeline, as he was stuck there because his retriever apparently fried up. Surprisingly, he gets to meet Jesus and reacts with all the awe and wonder of coming face to face with the Son of God. Simon tries to convince Jesus to not go through with the resurrection because he's seen the movie The Passion of the Christ. However, Jesus insists that he's going through with it, explaining that it is the only path he can take. Soon, Jesus is captured by the large mob to be crucified. Later, Ram also meets up with Jesus and his abductors. However, when he tries to initiate a conversation, a Roman centurion tries to assault him. Luckily, he manages to escape and goes back to a dying Amy. And to everyone's horror, he realizes that he and Amy's time retrievers have been disabled by Ahmed's men back in the present. Because wow. of this, they now have no way to get back home. The following wow. morning, Brant and Sabir disguise themselves as locals and scout the village for Jesus. But nothing goes as planned when Sabir steals a tomato from a local vendor and eats it without paying a penny. It turns out that this is a grave crime in this 33 AD timeline, sure so is. the local guards are called to arrest them. However, Sabir puts up a fight and shoots one of the guards. This causes chaos, but finally the guards manage to outnumber the two and take them for crucifixion. Tomatoes are not worth it, man. During the fight, Sabir tomatoes loses his time retriever, it, and it is later picked up by a woman. In Die the next scene, tomatoes, Jesus is also taken for the crucifixion. He is forced to carry his own cross while being whipped by the guard. Seeing this, Simon asks Jesus to escape, but the Son of God is adamant Simon. on finishing his duty to save humanity. Simon then That's helps Jesus wild. to stand up and carry the cross. That's Moments after trippy. the procedure is done, Ram arrives with a dying Amy who That's wishes to see trippy. her God in person. He pleads with the now crucified Jesus to save his girlfriend if he really is the God that he claims himself to be. However, Christ claims that Amy can only be saved by forgiving Brant. That's nonsense. We also see that the criminals crucified along Side Jesus are actually Sabir and Brant, where the latter asks for Jesus' forgiveness. Meanwhile, realizing that Jesus isn't going to do any miracles to save his girlfriend, Ram vainly tours around the village for help. He then finally meets with Simon and tells him about their situation. Elsewhere, with Brant and Sabir out of contact, Ahmed decides to travel back in time and arrives at the tome of the recently crucified Jesus. He believes that Jesus' disciples will steal his dead body soon to make it seem like God has been resurrected. Hence, he plans to ambush them from stealing the body and eventually prevent the spread of Christianity. Yeah. Suddenly, there is a massive earthquake, and in I that moment of guy. panic, he activates his time-traveling device, which makes him and Jesus' body disappear from the tomb. Meanwhile, a dying Amy mistakes the shake for her God's resurrection. When Ram and Simon go to the tomb to check, they do not find Jesus' body, and seeing all the glow sticks lying around, they deduce that Ahmed is responsible for it. Just then, two of Jesus' disciples arrive to check for Jesus' body and find out that it is disappeared. But before they can report it to others, Ram and Simon claim that Jesus has been resurrected. The two disciples mistake the boys for angels and immediately believe them. Hence, everything in the scripture happens as it is, oh, but not the way we gracious. expect it to. Right. They then return and find that Amy has breathed her last. This means that this timeline version of Amy is dead too. While grieving for their colleague's demise, Ram and Simon are approached by the same woman who had picked up Sabir's time retriever earlier. With this, the two decide to go back in time, this just before insane. Ram's 
parents were murdered. In that timeline, all the characters are still alive. They travel back, but since Ahmed's men have been waiting for them, Simon gets gunshot wounds. Despite this, the boys manage to kill all the men. Following this, Ram asks Simon to execute the default program, which will eliminate all the time loops except the original one, and to destroy the computer hard drive as soon as it is done. He then heads out to save his parents. After Ram leaves, Ahmed from the previous timeline arrives and kills Simon, but the latter has already destroyed the hard drive and executed the default program. Meanwhile, Ram saves his parents and goes after Ahmed from this timeline. At the billionaire's office, he finds Brant and nearly shoots him for killing Amy in the previous timeline, but he eventually realizes that this is not the version of Brant who did the deed. Ram eventually accepts Jesus' advice and learns the power of forgiveness, refusing to revenge kill this version of Brant's. Just then, Sabir, along with other men, arrives at the scene with Amy as hostage. He threatens Ram to give him the code to activate the time travel device, or else Amy will be killed. But instead of revealing the code, Ram mentions that he has forgiven Brant and asks him to be the hero. Thankfully, in this version of the timeline, Brant hasn't yet turned into a villainous character, so he quickly realizes that Ahmed is the bad guy, working for the extremists. He then guns down most of Ahmed's men before being shot dead by the boss himself. Taking advantage of this slight distraction, Ram stabs Ahmed in the back, finally killing him. Just then, a group of FBI officers arrive at the scene and arrest Ahmed's remaining men. Since Simon has activated the default program moments before he died, all of the time loops start merging into one, prompting different versions of the characters to vanish into thin air. Thus, Ram from the previous timeline also vanishes, while the original version is set free from the warehouse, where he was initially kept. In the end, all the scientists in this timeline survive. The movie then skips to three months later. The scientists plan to save Brant's family from the tragic car accident. Ram prepares to time travel with a road sign that says stop, hoping that it can save the family. Genius. Fortunately, the plan Genius. works, and he is able to save Brant and his family from their untimely death. The movie ends as Brant stands in awe and ponders if God helped them cheat death. Y'all, what in the actual heck did I just watch? What in the actual... What in the what? What? This is a movie? Like, this is an actual thing. Wow. I'm gone.